In today's video, we are going to be going over how to do temperature conversion. And we're going to show you how to convert between Celsius and Kelvin, Celsius and Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit and Celsius. Now, before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Step by Step Science, get all of our excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. When I look at my YouTube analytics, I see that so many people who watch our videos have not subscribed. Please subscribe, click the notification bell, give it a thumbs up, leave us a nice positive comment, and don't forget to share this video. In addition to that, I have made a bunch of other teaching and learning materials where you can find at our Teachers Pay Teachers website. There's tons of useful stuff there. The link is in the description below. Go check it out and let's get started. We're going to do temperature conversions and there are three common equations you're going to use. The first equation will help you to convert between degrees Celsius and Kelvin. It's simply that the Kelvin temperature is equal to the degrees Celsius plus 273. Sometimes you see, or a lot of times you'll see people with 273.15. I left the 0.15 off. Okay, just 273. And this equation will help you to convert between degrees Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit. It is simply the degrees Celsius temperature times 9 divided by 5 and then plus 32. You got to do this multiplication first and then add 32 and you will get the degrees in Fahrenheit. Now this equation is used to convert between Fahrenheit and Celsius and here you got to remember to put the Fahrenheit temperature in here minus 32 and then times 5 and divide it by 9. We have these parentheses here. You got to do order of operations. Do this part first and then do your multiplication and division. Up here you do your multiplication and division and then add 32. Okay, let's go over some helpful examples. The first example is in degrees Celsius, zero degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit. And we know that that is the freezing point of water on the Celsius scale and wonder what that is on the Fahrenheit scale. We're going to use this equation and we are simply going to substitute in our temperature in Celsius, which is zero and zero times nine to zero divided by five is also zero. So this term is zero. So the Fahrenheit temperature, the freezing point of water on the Fahrenheit scale is 32 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? Zero. All right, the next one is going to be the boiling point of water. And this is the boiling point of water on the Fahrenheit scale, and then we're gonna to convert to Celsius. And in this case, we're gonna use this equation, the other equation, and we're gonna put the Fahrenheit temperature in here and then subtract 32. And we have 212, which is the Fahrenheit temperature, minus 32 times five divided by nine. Two, 212 minus 32 is 180 times 5 divided by 9 gives us 100 degrees Celsius. So the freezing point of water on the Fahrenheit scale is 212 on the Celsius scale. It's 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, now this next example is similar to a previous one. I think the first one, but I just want to point out now we have a negative Fahrenheit temperature here. So you got to remember you can do the same thing with negative temperatures. You got to make sure you keep your signs in order here. Here's the equation we're going to use. And we substitute minus 362 and then we have minus 32. And so we're going to do that first and we're going to get that minus 362 minus 32 is minus 394 times 5 divided by 9 is minus 212 degrees Celsius. Okay, so you got to make sure you do the correct order of operations. Now for this one, we're going to convert between Celsius and Kelvin. And this, we're going to just use this equation. And we're going to substitute in here our Celsius temperature, which is 1,538. And we're going to add 273. And that gives us 1,811 Kelvin. Remember, we don't say degrees Kelvin. We just say Kelvin. Okay, now we can do the same thing. Also, just want to do one with a negative temperature. So I had negative 78 degrees Celsius. We're going to use the same equation, but you got to remember to put minus 78. So then you're going to get Kelvin, 195 Kelvin for that one. Okay, so just make sure you have, uh, keep your negative and your positive sign straight. Now we have body temperature and we want to know if the body temperature is 98.6 Fahrenheit, what is that in Kelvin? Well, we don't have an equation that will relate Kelvin and Fahrenheit. We have this equation that relates Kelvin and Celsius. So what we're going to do first is we're first going to convert to Celsius, and then we'll use this equation down here to convert to Kelvin. This is the equation we use for Celsius. So I'm going to put 98.6 in here, and then we have 98.6 minus 32 is 66.6, times five divided by nine, and you get 37 degrees Celsius. And then we can substitute that in here. 37 plus 273 is going to give us 310 Kelvin. So body temperature on the Fahrenheit scale is 98.6, on the Celsius scale is 37, and on the Kelvin scale, it's 310. Okay, 
Now, let's see what we got here. We are going to go through some uh, uh, an easier way, kind of a rule of thumb way to convert between Celsius and Fahrenheit. And that is simply that the Celsius temperature to convert to Fahrenheit, all you can, all you have to do is take the Celsius temperature, multiply it by two, see, two times Celsius, and add 30, and you'll get the approximate Fahrenheit temperature. Now, we're going to go through some examples, but this works best in kind of the temperatures that we're used to living at, you know, between like 10 and 30 degrees or 10 and 30 degrees Celsius, let's say. So let's go through and show you what we mean by that. So here we're going to convert these Celsius temperatures. Now, if you're not familiar with the Celsius uh, scale, you might not really understand what these are. And we're so used to thinking about temperatures sometimes in the United States and Fahrenheit, we don't know so much about Celsius. But what we're going to do is we're just going to take the Celsius temperature, multiply it by two, and we'll get the approximate Fahrenheit temperature. So five times two is 10 plus 30. It's going to give us 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, 10 times 2 is 20, plus 30 is 50 degrees Fahrenheit. You can say I put approximate, all right? 20 times 2 is 40, plus 30 is 70. 30 times 2 is uh, 60, plus 30 is 90. 50 times 2 is 100, plus 30 is 130. And 90 times 2 is 180, plus 30 is 210. So these are approximate. And for the first one, if we use our, our equation and calculate the exact temperature, we'll find that this one is 41, 10 degrees is 50, 20 is 68, 30 is 86, 50 is 122, and 90 is 194. So you can see in these temperature range, we're pretty close. For the first one, we're one degree Fahrenheit over. 40, 41, plus 110. You'll notice for 10 degrees, it's actually exactly right. So 10 degrees Celsius, you double it, and you add 30, you'll get 50, and that's the exact temperature on the Fahrenheit scale. So this one was 1 over. For 20, you get 68 degrees is the real temperature in the Fahrenheit. So that means it's minus. This one is minus less, 2 less. Okay, this one is minus 4. This one is minus 8, and this one is minus 16. So you can see in the temperatures that we live in, okay, depending on where you live, you might say between 5 and 30, that it's pretty close. We're either like 1, 2, 3, or 4 degrees off. So you can get a good approximation if somebody says, oh, it's 20 degrees Celsius. You can double it, and you can add 30, and you get 70. Oh, that's, that's kind of a nice, pleasant temperature. All right? If it's 30, you double that, and you add 30, you get 90. That's getting kind of hot. Okay, now when you go at higher and higher temperatures, it's going to be more and more off. There's going to be a greater difference between what we said is the Celsius and the approximation we did with doubling it and adding 30. But I think you can use that as a pretty good approximation between, you know, zero and 30 degrees Celsius. Okay, so there you go. We went over the equations. We did a bunch of different examples. And at the end here, we showed you a practical way, a kind of approximate way to do a conversion between Celsius and Fahrenheit. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you find that video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following five things. Subscribe to our channel. Click the notifications bell. Step-by-step -step science. Give us a thumbs up. Leave us a nice positive comment. And don't forget to share this video. Thank you so much for watching. And we will see you in the next video.